I feel like I'm in my country. I want to dance. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Oh, come on. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. That's better. Thank you, Peter and the quartet for such beautiful music and such a great energy this morning. As you can see, it seems like I had a little extra coffee today. <laughs> my name is Gabriela Rivero, and what a pleasure to see all of you today on this Celebration Sunday. And we are so blessed by your presence today. But before we start the day, please make sure you put your phones in silent meditation mode. And also, since you are here, let people know that you're here and check in, uh, and check in on your social media account. Thank you, everybody. How do you feel today? 
How do you feel today? Yeah, that's much better, right? Yes. So, and I like we do every Sunday. Today, we join people around the world and share in Unity's daily word. And the word today is believe. Believe. And the gospel poignantly communicate a father's pain and frustration when Jesus reminded him that all things are possible for those who believe. The father's son suffered from a serious illness that no one, not even the disciples, had been able to cure. And he said, I believe, help me, heal, help my unbelief. The father's cried. His son was healed. My journey of faith may not always be straight and smooth. I may at times reach the limit of my human ability to believe. In those moments, I surrender to the divine presence within me, affirming, I believe. Let's say it together. I believe. And that opens my mind and heart to the faith expressed in the life and ministry of Jesus. Through divine presence, the Christ in me, I believe and find the answers to my prayer. And from Mark 9, 24, immediately the father of the child cried out, I believe, help my unbelief. Isn't that great? And now within the energy of believing, um, we invite you to speak the names of those you would like held in prayer into this sacred space. We ask that you include the names of those who are asking for prayer on the screen and those here who have a prayer need in their heart. Thanks for adding my country to the list. And uh, written prayers might be placed in the prayer box outside the sanctuary. And today, prayer chaplain, our prayer chaplain today is Suellen Toby. Nice to see you, Suellen. Yes, and she's here to pray with you. And Gretchen is not here today, so our, our, new, our wonderful singer, Cheryl Wilson, will lead us in song today. You're all going to sing with me, right? Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. There's a holy hush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty powers and his grace. There's a holy hush of angels' wings. I see glory on his face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in Place. Allowing ourselves to just level into the silence. Becoming open and aware of our center. Allowing ourselves to tap into the presence of God that is within us. For in this silence is where our blessings are formed. This is the place where miracles come from forth to us. 
this is the moment where God speaks to us. So we simply turn away from that as we're with, with the, around us. Turn away from all thoughts of yesterday and any thoughts of tomorrow. Focusing in on this now moment, this blessed moment given to us by God. So we open the way for love, allowing love to move in and through our minds, our bodies, allowing love to surround us, to surround our homes, our families, the people we love. Taking a moment to express that love out into the world. Jesus said, love one another. And as we experience and express this love, we know that we are blessed. Blessed beyond measure, blessed and highly favored. And as we are blessed, we take a moment now to send blessings out into our world. Knowing that as we give, so shall we receive. So we send blessings now to the less fortunate in our world. Seeing someone lifted up. Seeing someone receive shelter and food and water in this moment. We send blessings out to those we love. Asking spirit now to work in and through their lives so that they may be even more blessed. We send blessings out into our community, our environment, our world, our nation. We see our environment wrapped in a ball of light. I mean, this earth has been given to us and it sustains us. Thank you, God. We take the energy now and we send these blessings down into our bodies, touching every atom, touching every cell, healing us of any dis-ease, any pain, any sorrow. Knowing it, it is an illusion. It's simply our opportunity to expand. We take this moment now and we send blessings out to the friends and families of those in Aurora. Seeing them blessed, seeing them lifted up, seeing them made whole again. And as we are open to these blessings, to these miracles that are coming forth in our lives, we take a moment now to get into the flow of our good, to open the channel for God to do his work in us. So let's take a moment and go into the silence and allow God now to move in and through us. Heavenly Mother, Father, everything God, thank you for coming into my heart today. Thank you for touching my life. I am open and receptive to your love. I am grateful that you are here with me. I am that I am. Continue to lead, guide, and direct me. Order my steps. Make me more like you, God. More of you, God, less of me. More of you, God, less of me. More of you, God, less of me. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. 
Thank you, God. And we see it now working in and through our lives, through the living spirit. And so it is. Amen. Let us welcome Cheryl back to the stage.
Cheryl Wilson, everyone. Oh my God, let's give her another hand. And a Peter Pozak Quartet. Yes. So, well, you're a good looking group I have here today. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So I am just really happy to be here. I'm very happy to see you all. You brave this weather and <laughs> Uh, well, we're kind of used to this weather by now, right? It's February, so yeah, we're ready for it to go now, right? Time to release it. Yeah, we're going to release it, you know. <laughs> yes. So I am just really happy to be here with you today. This is a, a very important time. There's a lot going on, and we just have an opportunity to become refreshed, to, to get our week started and, and to go forth in love and in the presence of God. It's Black History Month, so we're continuing to celebrate uh, this month as it is. It's also President's Day, so some people have tomorrow off, right? Yeah. Banks are closed, no post offices. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but besides that, we want to take this time to come together knowing and being appreciative of, of all the blessings that we are receiving. And we want to send forth great energy and light and love to those in Aurora, knowing that this was a tragic incident. We just want to send our blessings out to support in any way we can. It is the month of love still, so we are experiencing and expressing love, and it's kind of what I want to talk to you about today. My lesson title today is Eliminating the Idols of Lack. Eliminating the idols of lack. Mmm, we want to eliminate some lack today. Anyone? Yeah, anyone? So we have a great uh, opportunity to, to go forth and, and, and moving in this way, to send forth blessings and to receive blessings. And we do that by removing anything that is blocking our way from receiving. We want to receive today. Anyone open to receiving? I, I certainly want to receive. So I think about how in, in the Bible it talks about how we, we have come to this place of freedom, this place of knowing our good exists, that God is working in and through our lives. I want to read to you today from the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 2 through 6. These are the first of the two of the Ten Commandments, the first two. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. These are, very, these are the, the two most important commandments that we will find in the Bible. This particular scripture is actually a formula for better living, for bringing forth harmony. When I was a kid and going through my church of God and Christ, <laughs> that moment in my life, this particular scripture was used to, to stop me from doing anything that seemed outside of what was in the Bible. This was the morals clause. Don't listen to that kind of music. Don't do this. Don't do that. If you do, the Lord will punish you. This, this scripture was also used as a, an emphasis for saying that God is jealous. Never go against God or you will receive the wrath. Up to four generations will be punished. That was a pretty scary time for a kid. <laughs> yeah? But now I look at it as that formula, that, that gift that comes forth. What it's saying is that you, you have been freed and you have the opportunity to continue to live free. You don't need anything but me in order to live free. You don't need any idols. You don't need any games. You don't need all of these other things. Just believe in me. Hold me in your heart. You see, this particular scripture is talking about Egypt. And Egypt is a very important distinction. It's a very important understanding. Egypt still applies to us today. 
You see, Egypt is a place of bondage. And some of us are still living in that place of bondage. Some of us have to come forth out of that, that bondage, out of that, that feeling of being tied to something. Egypt actually metaphysically represents sense consciousness or being in bondage to worldly beliefs and their effects. And it's this sense consciousness that enslaves us to limitation, to that very thing, that very system, to those things that you can only physically see, hear, taste, touch, and smell. Discounting actually your, your true essence, your spiritual nature. Yet spirit is always speaking to us from within. Spirit is always reminding us to, to not make, don't create any idols. Don't create idols. Don't, don't get caught up in that kind of thing. Remember, I am here. Put me first in your belief system. You see, an idol in ancient times was some, some object. It was something that uh, someone uh, consistently get paid homage to, something that someone placed above him or herself, that they gave their power to, that they believe in. Some of us are still giving our power away, still believing in those things that are outside of our true nature. Let me ask you, what false idols are you paying homage to? What, what idols are you giving your power away to as your personal belief system. Three men were um, fishing when an angel appeared. The first guy said, I've suffered from back pains all my life. Can you help me? The angel touched his back and instantly he felt relief. The second guy pointed at his thick glasses and he, he begged for a cure to his poor eyesight. The angel took his lenses and tossed them into the lake and the man gained 20-20 vision. As the angel turned to the third fellow, he recoiled and screamed, don't touch me, I'm on disability. <laughs> Some of us become so tied to our idols. Our idols could be a paycheck, it could be a job, it could be a house, a car, it could be some trophy. It could be some belief, something that our parents taught us. It could be something that we're just holding on to. But we have to release, we have to eliminate all of those idols today. John Price of the Cordes Institute, and we'll put it up for you. He said that an idol of lack is a belief in mind of limitation, an image of insufficiency that is doted upon foolishly. It's a belief in mind of limitation. It's something that we've given our love to foolishly. For us, this means it's the focus of an illusion, the affirmation of a lie. It could be the illusion that there's not enough money. It could be the lie that, that there's, there's an insufficiency of wholeness in the body. It could be the lie that loving relationships are are just a dream, somewhere over the rainbow, as Cheryl just said. It could be the lie that, that a wonderful life, lifetime and, a, and fulfillment and, and contentment are beyond our reach. And we accept these common lies based on judging by appearances or by blindly following the ego. When in truth, spirit or that which is within us sees no barriers, no limitations for us. Let me clarify for you. Our egos are formed between the ages of four to six. Psychologically, it is a composite of everything that we believe about ourselves and our world based on what we've seen and heard and intuited. As children, we, we're like sponges. We take it all in. And we gain our sense of self from those that are around us. And if those traits aren't approved by those around us, we repress them. We, 
they become a part of our shadow side. Not that they're bad, simply they're not acceptable to those who we're influenced by. And from there, we, 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 we form an ego. And this, this particular ego, it, it becomes a point of duality. We start thinking in two different ways. The ego is forever. It is forever insecure. It only wants to impress others. It's always incomplete. And it, and it simply wants to remain hidden at all times. This ego, it, it, it wants to gain the value of others because it doesn't value itself. Now, the, the soul or the conscious self, on the other hand, it seeks to experience and express the essence of love it was created with. It knows its value. It knows that its greatest power is in resonating and manifesting and receiving love. Pope Francis, he, he said that love is stripping away our idols, even the most hidden ones, and choosing God as the center of our lives. We have to use love and strip away those things. We have to love ourselves, love our lives, love our blessings, love everything that we've been given. So then who, who gave us the expressions, the, who gave us the messages, I'm not good enough, I'm not deserving, I'm not a value, we'll never have enough, life is difficult, making money is a struggle, I, I'll never make a living doing what I love the most. People of the opposite sex are so untrustworthy. We'll never find a church home like this. Well, I struck a chord on that one. I think. I think. <laughs> or this particular disease has been running in my family forever. Who gave us those messages? It's the ego or that limited self that's created these idols of lack with its value system of greater than, less than, is always taking score. With its self-doubts of never knowing enough. With its, with its projected fears of not being safe enough, not having enough, not loving deeply enough, not being understood enough, not being creative enough, not capable enough or strong enough or handsome enough or smart enough. It's the ego or this, this limited sense of self that is that is worshiping at the altar of lack. It's fear-based. It wants to keep you separated from source. And it will never know complete wholeness. It only comes, it always comes from a sense of lack, whether it is outwardly blustering or inwardly cowering. Our society has, cre has, has looked to these these idols of lack as a, as a reality. For example, corporations use lack as a motivation for advertising. They'll tell you that, uh, they'll have you think that if you don't buy what they're selling, you will not only still be in lack, but you will also, that you are also defective at your core. <laughs> and that's enhancing this idea of not being good enough. But you know, through the inspiration of the divine within us, we are called, each one of us is called to, to come, come into a new awareness to be lifted up, knowing that we'll always be provided for, regardless of what the corporations say, knowing that all things are possible to him who believes, and that it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is always God's gift to you to give. So then how do we remove these idols of lack? Well, first, we have to see that these idols of lack, these, these fear-based, ego-based things, are nothing but an illusion. And what do we do with an illusion? We don't have to kill it. We just have to dissolve it, diminish it. We have to, we have to transmute it back to the nothingness from which it came. In, in uh, in old European customs and myths, 
when uh, the new Christian God replaced the old God, the old God lost his potency because individuals didn't pay homage to it anymore. And the same is true for these idols of lack. We can dissolve them by using the energy of our thoughts to redirect those, those, those thoughts of lack into thoughts of love, into thoughts of, of knowing that our, our heart's desire already exists for us. We just have to come forth knowing that the presence of God is there within, is within us and tap into, tap into that, that great I am that is there within us. A simple quote from John Price is, can we not understand that the great I am is the answer to everything? Can we not understand the great I am, that thing that is within you, the I am that I am that freed you in the first place is the, is the answer to all? We have to allow ourselves to come forth using the I am power, affirming our truth, knowing that our good is already coming forth to us. I am prospering in all my endeavors. I am whole and in radiant health. I am loved and loving in ideal relationships. I am in my true place of divine fulfillment. Is it so hard for us to affirm those ideas? Let us put it up one. So let us say it together then. I am. I am. I am in my true place of divine fulfillment. Allowing ourselves to affirm these truths. We rid ourselves of those idols of lack. We remove them from our lives. We let go of the cancer and the diabetes and the high blood pressure. We let go of the, the insecurity and not feeling safe in relationships. We no longer feel that we should be poor or that we're in poverty or that we don't have enough. We open the way for our gifts to come through. So this time we're going to say it again and we're going to say it with energy, right? I am. I am whole and in radiant health. I am loved and loving in. I am in my true place of divine fulfillment. Take a deep breath. Take it in and release. You see, when we allow ourselves to affirm our truth, whether we believe it or not in this moment, these are cold words for releasing the lack and opening a channel for the, the newness and greater manifestation. We simply allow ourselves to come into a new state of consciousness, a new state of mind. We no longer stay stuck in sense consciousness. We lift ourselves up. We raise our consciousness to a level of divine understanding so that we may have peace and love and light and truth always flowing in our world. Friends, there's a, in the book of Deuteronomy, which is one of the first five books of the Bible, there's this law that is written. And this law, you've all heard a million times. The law is, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. 2,000 years after that law was written, Jesus added, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. This, this means you don't have to run out and give your power of love to your neighbor. It means that by loving God, loving that great I am, co-creating love with spirit, that you automatically transcend all those barriers of lack and bring forth love into the world. Simply by being the presence of love, by allowing the source of love to work in your life, you eliminate the idols of lack. You remove those, those limited beliefs and you, you are choosing God as the center of your life. Then you can experience and express greater love and prosperity in your life, in your wallet, in your relationships, in your home, in your community, in your church, and ultimately in your world. Just allow yourself to come into a new understanding. 
to embrace a new choice, to let go and allow yourself to be free, to come into harmony with your truth. Are you willing to do this with me today? Yes. Are you willing to embrace your truth? Yes. Are you willing to affirm your goodness? Yes. Well, Union of Chicago, thank you so much and God bless you for the day. Mwah. Love you. Yeah. Walking down the street, smoggy-eyed, looking at the sky, starry-eyed, searching for a place with every eye. Crying in the night, teary-eyed. Don't you know that it's true? That for me and for you, the world is a ghetto. Don't you know that it's true? That it's true. For me and you, the world is a ghetto. Wonder when I find paradise somewhere. There's a home. Sweet and nice. Wonder when I'll find the happiness. Well, I better give it up. Better give it up now, I guess. Cause don't you know? Is it true? That for me and for you, the world is a ghetto. Don't you know that it's true? That for me and for you, the world is a ghetto. There's no need to search anywhere. Happiness is right here. Find your share. If you know your love, if you know your love, you can be secure. Paradise is here to be sure. Don't you know? Is it true that for me and 
for you the world do you think that it's true that for me and for you this world is a ghetto don't you know that it's true that for me and for you the world is a ghetto don't you know don't you know is it really true do you think that the world is a ghetto don't you know that it's true the world is a ghetto Cheryl Wilson, everyone, and the Peter Pozak Quartet. Wonderful. Oh, boy. So we are still, we're going to stay in the flow here, allow ourselves to remain in the energy of light and love. We're going to go forth this week, releasing and eliminating those items of lack. Not getting caught up in the, the, the things, the illusions, the lie. We're going to stop telling God about our big problems. We're going to start telling our big problems about our big God. Yes? So let's open our hearts now to give, to begin to express the love and light, sending out blessings into our world. We send blessings to Kim there, sending blessings forth to Roe back there and to Diane and Carl and Howard, we send blessings out into our universe to Diane Haglin too, and Noreen and Jean and Drew. We're just sending blessings out to everyone, knowing that the peace and love of God is working in our lives. So I want you to take your offering, put it in your left hand, and cover it with your right. And let us say our offeratory blessing together. Divine love, richly flowing through me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am grateful for the blessings of this day. I am grateful for the blessings on the way. And so it is. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for my friends, Spirit. Thank you for my friends. My wonderful, my wonderful, my wonderful friends. My wonderful, my wonderful, my wonderful friends. Thank you for my health, Spirit. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my health, Spirit. Thank you for my health. My radiant, my radiant, my radiant health my radiant my radiant my radiant health thank you for my wealth spirit thank you for my wealth thank you for my wealth spirit thank you for my wealth my opulent my opulent my opulent well my opulent my opulent my opulent well thank you for this day spirit thank you for this day thank you for this day Hey, Spirit, thank you for this day, this healing, this healing, this healing day, this healing, this healing, this healing day. Oh, yeah. Yes, I love it. Thanking Spirit today, holding the light for everyone here.
seeing God's goodness going forth. We send out blessings to our volunteers, our ushers here, and welcome team, all those who are supporting our ministry. ministry. Hey, Hope, how are you? Say hello, Hope, to everyone. <laughs> all right, good to see you. So I want to say a special um, something about someone. Craig is leaving us. Uh, he's moving to London. And we see him going forth blessed, and we send him forth with our prayers and goodness. Say hello, Craig. <laughs> he told me I could have his apartment over there anytime I want, so I figured I better give a good plug. So <laughs> let us take a moment to bless our offering. Thanking God for all that we've been given. We say thank you, Spirit, for all the love, all the light, all your truth that you bring to us. Thank you for these gifts. We know they come from those who love you and who are open and receptive to doing your will. Not my will, but thy will be done. We see your gifts going forth in truth and in spirit. We know that your goodness is working in and through our lives and in the lives of those we love. Continue to bless us. Press down, shaken together and running over. Bring these gifts back to us 100-fold in any way you see fit. And we see it happening today in the name and very nature of the living spirit. Repeat after me, I am a child of God. I am awake to my good. I am blessed and highly favored. I am blessed and highly favored. Yay, God. Yay, God. Amen. Thank you. Today's flowers are donated by uh, Sarah Bibbick in honor of February birthdays of Zoe and Jake Bibbick. Yes. And she said, Zoe, 18 and a registered voter. Yes. Your fierce, funny, determined, a global thinker, a spiritual seeker, and a beloved daughter. And Jake, 15 and a gentle giant. <laughs> You're a compassionate, clever, bold, open, wise, and beloved son with deep love and appreciation. Are they here? I don't see. Oh, Sarah's here. Hi, Sarah. Happy birthday, Zoe. And happy birthday, Jake. Yes. So if you are new here, and it is now it's time to celebrate you, thank you for the gift of your presence today. We are so glad to have you with us and hope you have enjoyed your experience. If you are new here, please raise your hand high up so we can see you. Welcome. <laughs> the people passing out fl flowers are members of our welcome team. Additionally, you will be given a clipboard and a, free, and a free gift. Please fill out the attached visitor's card. And after service, a team member will meet with you to collect the card in the Sunshine Gallery to your left. Couple of final announcements. The pet ministry is here each Sunday with pets in need of for a foster forever homes. Please see Carol Stegall for more information on how to take in a pet or otherwise support this wonderful ministry. You can also stay connected with Unity Chicago by visiting our website at unitychicago.org and signing up for an e-blast. And also, please help us grow by leaving a review on Google, Facebook, or Yelp. We really appreciate your support. And now, I welcome Tammy Bridges, Ministry of uh, Lia Liaison, to connect to, um, I'm sorry, to the Outreach Committee. Tammy. Thank you, Gabby. So I have a couple of announcements on behalf of the Outreach Committee. Um, we had a spectacular event here on Wednesday evening. Um, it was called When Home Won't Let You Stay. It was a presentation by artist Jim Bowie, who is currently being exhibited in the Sunshine Gallery. And it was also a community uh, conversation and transformational. 
that's the only word that I have for that event. Um, there were lots of tears and lots of laughter and so much hope and inspiration. And I want to thank uh, a whole slew of people who were involved in making that happen. Our artist, uh, Jim Bowie, special guest, Kenny Knese, our story narrators. Our story narrators came from so many different areas in Unity, and I am just so proud and pleased at the level of participation we had in this event. Uh, the Spiritual Renewal Committee was um, part of the presenting team. The Outreach Committee, we had representatives from the youth ministry, families, and kids. And it just made it incredibly powerful. Uh, special thanks to Rev. James Parker, the ministry team, the Board of Trustees for allowing and supporting this event. We had many committees that were involved in making this happen. Uh, and I'd also like to thank the women's group for coming in lieu of meeting that evening. So that was really cool that they decided that was their event for the month. Uh, the Sunshine Gallery team, Laura and Kelly, for clearing a spot on the calendar for us to be able to do this event. Uh, Juan Ramirez, our AV tech, who needs like six more arms because technical difficulties are always a challenge around here. Uh, Matt Scotharn, our outreach committee chair, and David Vigiano for PR. He got us on TV for this. If you haven't seen the clip, it's available on the eblast. So that's just one more reason to subscribe and read it. Um, I have a video for related to our next announcement. We are having a night ministry collection drive. And uh, there's a video here about what the night ministry does. So let's take a look at that. Relationships are something that everybody needs to know. I think that a team is fundamental to this, a fundamental drive to not live our lives in isolation, have somebody with whom we are in contact, care for us as we need care about. Unfortunately, for a lot of individuals whom we serve who are on the street, they don't have that sense of connection in our lives. So, one of the great things that the night ministry does is establish relationships with them and just accept them for who they are and where they're at on their life's journey. I think DeAndre's story is, is very typical of, of the young people who come to us. For example, when DeAndre came to the night ministry, the staff connected with him. The staff took him in, gave him a place to sleep, provided him with hot meals, and we listened to his story. Since I've been here, they've been helping me out a lot. And they always stay on me about my grades, about me getting up early, making a school one time. But same for them, I've been in school. And upon that, I'm making a go to the Marines. Everybody trying to succeed, make it out of here, become stable enough so they could be on their own, move on in life so they could just look back on this and say, yeah, thanks because of that boost at the night ministry, I'm able to do this in the world. I'm able to change my life in this big, dramatic way. And right now, I'm currently not by myself. I'm in touch with my mother and my brother. So they pretty cool. You know, a lot of it's about planting seeds. Um, a young person may come into our shelter maybe only stay with us for one week or two weeks, and we may never hear from them again. But then maybe three or four years down the line, they'll call us up and they'll say, look where I am now, look at what I've accomplished. It's the same thing if somebody comes to our health outreach bus, we know what kind of impact that hot meal has on their lives, especially if they're hungry, but we don't know, and that's one of the beautiful things about relationships is what happens at the moment, we may never see the results of it a few years later. They'll come back and they'll say to us, it's because of the work that you did with me and the friendship that I had with your staff or your volunteers that really very much helped me out along the road. There's something so special about coming out and being able to say, I'm a supporter of you as a person, as a member of the community. When you come out and serve a meal, it really says something that you care about them and that you really care about their personal well-being. 
There's a lot of people around here that use it. They don't have anything. They're single models and stuff like that. And they live everything they can get. They took care of me and in the winter time. I had a bad cold. And they nursed me up in there and checked my pressure and everything. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's good for the neighborhood, it's good for, for everyone. Yep, you see what I'm saying again? I'm great. <laughs> I'm supposed to be going for a home with this Delta. But they say they can help me. I got high blood pressure. I got an HIV test. I got a flu shot. It worked. <laughs> Whatever they was on, now I get it. Uh, we just want to thank you for staying with us because without your help, those relationships would not be possible and those lives would not be changed. All right, so that's a little bit about the mission of the Knight Ministry. The Outreach Committee is very excited to be partnering with them once again and uh, bringing back uh, that connection. We are taking uh, monetary donations, which we'll use to purchase uh, new socks, underwear, winter hats, and gloves, and wool blend or wool blankets that are appropriate for outdoor use. You can make a cash donation or you can donate the specific items that we're looking for. We've got collection boxes um, and a cash collection box. We will take um, cash, credit, checks, and Denise Fort will be downstairs uh, heading up that table. This is going to be our Lent outreach project. And uh, so we're really looking forward to helping them out and uh, being of service. Thank you so much. And now let's welcome back today's vocalist, Cheryl Wilson. <laughs> Keep on learning, soldiers. Keep on warring. Well, keep on turning, cause if one will be too long. Towers keep on lying by your people keep on dying well, keep on turning cause in the war won't be too long So let it let me try it again. It's my last time on earth I did the whole world sin. I'm so glad I know more than I knew then. Gonna keep on trying till I reach the other side. Teachers. Keep on teaching, preachers. Keep on preaching. Well, keep on turning, cause it won't be too long. Keep on believing, sleepers, just stop sleeping, cause it won't be too long, I'm so glad it let me try it again, cause my last time on earth I needed a whole lot of sin. I'm so glad I know more than I knew then. Gonna keep on trying till I reach, till I reach the other side. Yeah. 
Till I reach the other side Of a better day Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Peter, uh, for and your wonderful quartet. Thank you so much for a wonderful message today, Reverend James. And thanks to each and one of you for sharing this morning with us. Have a great week. And now let's all of us be back home. Thank <laughs> you. 